it's just not the way we ought to be. It's, it's, the coarseness is not acceptable. There's a lot of cable news shows that reach directly into hundreds of thousands of viewers and they're really not always very fair to the president. The fake media is trying to silence us, but I'm president and they're not. So just days before President Donald Trump's trip to Germany for the G20 summit, getting a lot of backlash for a video he posted on Twitter. Check it out. The video appears to be an edited clip from a Trump appearance at WrestleMania from years ago. The person he is wrestling and punching is replaced, as you can see, with a logo for CNN. His tweet included fraud news CNN with the video. Now, this comes after the president insulted two TV hosts on Twitter last week. He also continued to bash the media at a faith rally in Washington on Saturday. Much to discuss. Joining us tonight, Siraj Hashmi with Red Alert Politics and Margot Suska, who is a communications and journalism professor at American University. So, Siraj, to you first. So, the, the argument here is that with Donald Trump tweeting out all of these things about fake news and the attacks on CNN, that that has, is somehow skewing the narrative and actually taking the place of work that's actually being done in Washington. Uh, I actually think it's more of a distraction. I mean, Donald Trump, you know, anytime he gets his phone, he's able to tweet. He just says what's on his mind. And a lot of times when he's going after the media, it's usually for, for valid reasons. I mean, with CNN, over the last week, we've seen uh, at least one major story involving a uh, Trump associate, Anthony Scaramucci, that turned out to be fake, because, or, or false, I should say, resulting in the re resignation of three journalists and the story being retracted, as well as CNN issuing an apology. So in a lot of cases, while, while CNN probably does some good journalism, there's a lot, a lot of it gets undermined by the, the fact that some of these sources that are uh, feeding stories to CNN, whether they be anonymous, they don't always hold up uh, to snuff. And as a result, Trump in, instead feels vindicated in tweeting out a WrestleMania style tweet, where if you look at it literally, it's <laughs> rest, wrestling is fake and therefore it's all staged and no one, no one is harmed in the, in the I'm process. sure everyone sees it that way, of course. <laughs> so, uh, Margo, are, are these attacks warranted, do you believe, or do, or do they befit the office of the presidency? Absolutely not. I think the president of the United States attacking a mainstream media organization, whether it was meant in jest or not, I think there have to be better things that will occupy his time than that. And I think that these attacks, the rhetoric behind them, I think, is potentially damaging and I, to, the, to the U.S. media system. And I think it's damaging to the faith in news. You have a lot of great journalists and journalists that um, are working really hard to hold leaders accountable at the state level, at the national level, federal level. And I think that these tweets are doing damage. And to the extent that these tweets are seemingly the thing that people are talking about the most and the things that is driving the discussion on cable news. But do we take that to mean that that's what people inside of Washington, policymakers and, and the president and his staff, that they're that it's taking up most of their time? Well, I don't think so. If anything, it's become a, a, a distraction. If you have the mainstream media that's covering it, um, I think that m what I would be most concerned about is what's happening behind closed doors and the stories that the media isn't covering because they're focusing on this. So I think in that way, I would agree that it is a distraction, whether or not it's a, a distraction that's being, um, you know, is done on purpose to keep the American people in the dark about what's happening and, and kind of um, the media not covering those issues. I think we don't know necessarily, but I think there's probably a lot of work getting done behind closed doors yeah, now I mean, that we're not just, seeing. Just, just, just on Friday, uh, the House passed Kate's Law, which is a major uh, step towards curbing illegal immigration and sanctuary cities. And that was a big accomplishment for the Trump administration because that's something that he, he campaigned on and something his administration has delivered on. However, the mainstream media has been covering his tweets 28 times more than the passing of Kate's law. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at the Senate health care bill, while the vote has not yet come to pass, uh, instead of focusing on the, the critiques of the bill and how there actually needs to be many improvements on it, they're focusing on the tweets. So and it's, was this a crafty way by the president to say, hey, look over here while I move <laughs> over here and get stuff done? Well, I, I mean, the Senate health care bill, that's not moving anywhere until they probably more, move more in the conservative direction because you have several holdouts like Mike Lee, Rand Paul, and Ted Cruz. Um, but really, if you're, gonna, if you're looking at legislation, uh, Trump needs to, he may need more media pressure to try to get on the phone with these senators who are holdouts. Well, let's end on this, Margo. If the president is tweeting less about controversial things, is that actually changing business getting done in, in D.C. and business being done in the executive branch? 
Well, that I can't say. I, I don't have a window onto what's happening in the executive branch, unfortunately, nor do I have a window onto the president's mind. But I certainly think that it's taking attention away from, uh, from, from real policy issues. And right. I think that it's when you have people around the world questioning, um, you, you know, this this federal government and. Uh, I think that that's a, that's a real issue and a real concern. Yeah, well, thank you both. It is a discussion that will certainly continue over the next three years, unless anything drastic changes. Well, Siraj is going to be back with us in just a few minutes. We're going to be talking the latest on health care. Will we see a repeal-only plan come up and be debated in the Senate next week?